This video is brought to you by Vessi. More about them later in the video. I know you guys wanna see more content on the eclipse, but obviously the dino day didn't go exactly to plan. <laughs> we did do a little bit of testing and we think we know what the issue is, but we'll get to it, we'll get it fixed up, get it back on the dino making big power. In the meantime, we've got another car to fix. This thing did do fantastic on its first towing adventure, towing the Eclipse to the dyno, but there was one major issue. We got five miles a gallon. At first, I thought that the, it just, it, that's just how it was gonna be. But yesterday, we drove it all the way to Alabama. Without towing, it still only got 11 miles a gallon. According to Google, this thing should be getting around 12 miles per gallon city and around 16 miles per gallon highway. I understand that it's got a bull bar, it's got slightly bigger tires, so it's probably not gonna get that, but we're getting like half of what we should be getting, and so we gotta fix that. I don't know why it's doing this, but it does have a few check engine light codes for a knock sensor, for inefficient cats, because the cats were deleted by some previous owner. The best place to start from is to fix all of the check engine light codes. Hopefully one of those is causing it to get bad fuel economy. Then we can continue modifying it. More lights, roof rack, airbags and other towing upgrades, and a bunch of other little stuff. Come on, come on over here. I wanted to just space out the O2 sensors to try to fix the, the check engine light for that, but of course the O2 sensor on this thing are the flanged O2 sensors. So we're gonna have to fabricate some flanges to space those out. Wanted to replace the exhaust gaskets, but you have to essentially pull the motor to do that. So probably aren't gonna do that. In order to do the knock sensor, gotta take the intake manifold off. This thing is turning out not to be the easiest thing to work on engine-wise. <sighs> Two UZs failing me, man. And we got a bunch of little stuff. Let's fix this damn thing. came and gnawed on our thing. There. We're gonna go ahead and kind of pull back the wiring harness and rerun a wire to the uh, knock sensor and replace the knock sensor. Somebody tried to fix this at one point because this was in the V and it's a butt connector. Oh, there it goes. So the knock sensor is all fixed. The intake manifold would be ready to go on, but we're gonna go ahead and have all the injectors cleaned and tested and then put new injector seals in all of uh, all those just to make sure the fueling of the car is all good. While we wait for that to be done, I'm gonna do the um, valve cover gaskets real quick and then exhaust time. First, let me thank this for you, sponsor. Ugh. Vessi Shoes. Now, if you haven't heard of the brand Vessi, listen up, because their sneakers are going to change your life for a couple of different reasons. The first and craziest and most important thing that makes Vessi stand out from other brands is the fact that their sneakers are 100% waterproof. Not water resistant, waterproof. <sighs> Let me show you. As you can see, Vessis will keep your feet dry in the wettest of weather. But whether you're going on a wet, muddy hike, you're at the beach, it's raining outside, or maybe you're just walking through the grass at a track event and you know the grass is a little wet because it's springtime. These sneakers, however, aren't like other waterproof sneakers because they're made from a Domitex dual climate knit material that keeps your feet cool in the summer, but warm in the winter. They're comfortable, they weigh less than most sneakers, and they're like flexible and they're breathable. I've personally fallen in love with these Vessi sneakers for a couple of different reasons. One is because they're comfortable and waterproof, all that stuff I've talked about already. But in addition to that, I love these specific ones. The material that they're made out of makes it really easy to just slip your shoes on and off. I was also having issues with my previous shoes here at the shop where I'm standing all day, like 
my feet just aching by the end of the day. The Vessi shoes have fixed that. They support my feet way better and they're way more comfortable. For all these reasons, you guys should get a pair of these Vessi sneakers. And if you're interested, you guys can use my code Gingium for $25 off each pair of your Vessi shoes. They also offer free shipping to numerous different countries. I'll have a link in the description down below and up there in the cards. Huge thank you again to Vessi Shoes for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the Sequoia. So this honk right here has got to go. It's going to be replaced with two, two and a half inch little bottle resonator. 40 bucks off eBay. So that's pretty cool. Then it's going to do a white pipe back into the factory exhaust. We're going to do the exact same valve muffler that we put onto the, the Honda Fit. And then right here, these O2 sensors, we're just going to fabricate a little spacer for those to hopefully get them just the perfect amount out of the uh, the exhaust stream to uh, pass any of the code. <laughs> The next step was to go ahead and remove the O2 sensors, which proved to be incredibly difficult. As you can see, the exhaust on this thing, it's, it's a little rusty. And because of that, no matter what I did, I could not get the studs out of the O2 sensor mounts. Instead, I cut them off. And of course, for the driver's side, the front drive shaft was in the way. So I had to go ahead and remove the front drive shaft. And then those studs, got stuck as well. So I cut those ones out. The process that realistically should have taken five minutes took over two hours. But the next step was to go ahead and fabricate some spacers for the O2 sensors to hopefully clear the check engine code.
the studs didn't break off, I would have bolted it to the studs and had it be like a nice bolt-on experience, but then both the studs broke and we couldn't get them out. So uh, we're gonna weld this spacer 90 degrees from where the old flange is, like that. The two sensor should just bolt in and hopefully be the perfect height, perfect, perfect depth. <laughs> So we got our injectors back from cleaning. Shout out to Sneaky Sancho Speed Shop for doing that. They said that three of them had a slightly weird spray pattern and had slightly clogged filters. So hopefully that helps. Doesn't seem like any of them are really that bad though. Then we've got our new injector seals. A day late, thanks to FedEx. See if it runs still. See if we put it back together right. Secondly, see how the exhaust sounds. And then thirdly, see what check engine lights come back. Now there definitely will be at least the check engine light for the emissions because I haven't gotten the new gas cap, but hopefully the knock sensor code is gone and the, uh, the catalytic converter, that kind of stuff is also gone. been idling for 10 minutes no check engine light yet exhaust sounds sounds loud sounds raspy but I think it'll be perfect maybe we'll see ah uh, it kind of sounds like one of the leaned out trucks just like it needs cats honestly that's what it needs Engine light just popped on too. Woo! Yeah, I do not like the way that sounds. <laughs> it sounds cool revving it, but yeah, that does not sound cool. Yeah, it just it just sounds like a straight pipes truck. Perfect. Yeah, and it's dead silent with a close. So. At least we can stop our ears from bleeding with a push of a button. Two codes. Three, two, five. What? That's the knock sensor. P0325, knock sensor circuit malfunction. And then P0430, non-functional cat. So all that misery I had just endured, both removing the intake manifold to fix the NOx sensor, and having to deal with a bunch of rust and crap to space out the O2 sensors, was for nothing. Both truck engine codes were still present. But 
At least we could fix a different one. Here we have the Motorcraft gas cap. Don't know why that was put on. And this is a OEM Toyota one, supposedly. Ooh. Three days worth of work doesn't fix anything. 30 seconds fixes something. I had a nightmare last night. I was in a prison, yeah, like a prison cell. Everything was dark, but there was one really, 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 really bright, really big check engine light. It drove me insane. It was so bright and it just wouldn't go off. So we're gonna make it go off. <laughs> If I can't fix the knock sensor code by replacing the knock sensor, then I'm going to fix it by uh, hacking the ECU. I looked up a pinout on the ECU and I think I found the right wire, so I'm gonna cut it and um, hopefully I don't just ruin my Sequoia. That gray wire right there, it's for the uh, left knock sensor, the one that's bad. So if I cut it, here we go, cut. So I should start it, nothing should change. Promising, it started. We should drive it and it should throw the code for the left knock sensor. And it shouldn't throw any other codes, meaning that that gray wire is indeed for the left knock sensor. Then we'll go ahead and cut the wire for the right knock sensor, drive it, and it should throw a code for the, for the right knock sensor. If all that happens, then we'll splice both the left and right knock sensor into the right knock sensor sensor, and then it shouldn't throw any codes. That's what we're going for. I ain't taking that intake manifold off again. No siree, I've taken way too many UZ intake manifolds off in my life. And the exhaust is stuck open for some reason. Check engine light is on. So that is for the left knock sensor, cat and cat. Okay, perfect. It's got the same codes as always had. Black wire, be gone. Welcome back, Mr. Check Engine Light. So that's the one for the left one. Pretty sure this is the one for the right one. Yep, knock sensor two, circuit malfunction bank two. Okay, so those are the right wires. So let's try splicing them. Please, please OBD2 gods, let this work. We just did one lap around the shop. No check engine light. We're doing another one. Just to see what happens. We just did two laps around the shop and still no check engine light. I think we fixed it. I think we at least fixed the knock sensor codes. I'm assuming the light's gonna come back on after a little bit more driving from the O2 sensors, but who knows? Uh, why are you just doing like that? <laughs> What do you mean, why, why am I smiling like that? Who got you smiling like that? <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna have that nightmare again. That smile didn't last for very long. After another 10 miles of driving, the check engine light indicating that there were no catalytic converters on the vehicle had returned. So what do you say we stop messing around? Let's put some catalytic converters in this aquarium. clappy you can still hear the claps but it's way i think quieter from which i didn't know is that the 47 2uz in this thing has different cams so like it's never gonna sound as good as a 1uz yeah i think that sounds good yeah still loud it's actually really not that loud. The question is, of course, will the check engine light come back on? With a high flow cat, it shouldn't, but if your O2 sensors are super sensitive, then it can. I'm thinking with the high flow cat and the spacing of the O2 sensors, it, it should be good. Yeah,
So sure enough, after another 20 or so miles of driving, check engine light came back, but it, it, it wasn't any of the codes that the car has previously experienced. The new code is a P0136 code, which means the downstream O2 sensor for the driver's side fails to meet the minimum and maximum voltage limits. Blah, 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 blah. Google says a couple issues can cause this. Number one, bad O2 sensor. So we have another O2 sensor. Number two, exhaust leaks. And I know for a fact that the driver's side exhaust manifold has an exhaust leak. And I've tried a couple times to take it off to fix it, but I can't get any of the bolts off. We're gonna do a Hail Mary hope that it's just the O2 sensor. Otherwise, I'm not sleeping well for a long time. Since replacing the O2 sensor, I've driven the car almost 50 miles and still no check engine light. Only time will tell if it's permanently gone, but at least for now, I think I can sleep well. The Sequoia is definitely driving way better than when we first got it. It's got more power, for sure. It sounds cool now. And it's getting better miles per hour. Still not what Google says it should be getting. And still, I think even below average of what other people have been saying that they're getting. But way better than five miles a gallon uh, towing 11 miles per hour on the highway. We got like 14, 15 there on our little drive. So, you know, could be worse. I am sorry that this took so long, guys. I wanted to have this video done like two weeks ago before I went on vacation with my family, but then yeah, it just, everything took way longer than expected and it had more issues than we thought. In the next video, we're fixing this thing, doing the windows and having some fun of it before we street tune it. And then after that, maybe we work on this. I think so. And if you wanna watch those videos ahead of schedule, you can click up there, become a patron. Huge thank you again to uh, <clears throat> Bessie Shoes for sponsoring the video. See you guys in the next one. Good? Yep. First, let me thank this for your sponsor. Oh God. Ugh. Vessi Shoes. I went to like do one swing. Yeah. And then like by the time I was ready to let go, I was going this back way again oh. already. So I don't like. <laughs>